Oh. Awesome, Nate. So uh, first off, I want to welcome everybody to the class today. Thank you everyone for joining us. I know Jesse and I are very excited to be here today and teach you how to paint these really cute, funky pumpkins. Um, I'm super excited. Today, Jesse's going to show us some really cool tips and tricks on how to shape hot glue into really cute and spooky shapes. And we're going to talk about um, some different tips and tricks on how to use our wonderful folk art treasure gold. So I'm excited to hear about that, as well as just picking different colors to create your own um, unique fall color palette. So I think without further ado, Jesse, are we ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, cool. Thanks, Em. Um, so like Emma said, my name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Platt and welcome to our folk art frightfully funky pumpkin class. Um, I'm really excited to show you these pumpkins here today. They're really different. They're kind of eclectic for fall. They're kind of unexpected as far as Halloween goes with the color palette and the style. So I'm excited to show you how I did them and give you a little bit of inspiration today. So before we get started, I'll let you know what supplies we'll need for this class. So, of course, I have my wonderful um, Michael's Funkins, as we call them, the, they're faux pumpkins. So this shape especially is one of my favorite faux pumpkins to craft on that you can find at Michael's. I believe this is the 10 inch pumpkin and they also have a six inch of this ver uh, version of this, which I just love. They come in white and orange, which is great for crafting, really easy to paint on. Um, and they're just lots of fun and really versatile. I also have a few other smaller pumpkins here today. So just little accent pumpkins um, to kind of create a cute little grouping here, but whatever pumpkins, whether they're real or they're fake you have at home um, will absolutely work for this. People ask all the time if you can craft on um, real pumpkins and you absolutely can. So uh, my kind of thinking when it comes to crafting on real pumpkins is if I'm gonna be putting a lot of time into something, I like to have it for more than just one season. But of course, if you use a real pumpkin, it's not gonna be good uh, next year to decorate your home with. So that's why I prefer to craft on faux pumpkins. But if you just want it for one uh, Halloween, then you can absolutely do all of these techniques on real pumpkins as well. All right, so I've got, got my pumpkins. I've also got, of course, my folk art acrylic paints as usual. So uh, here at Plaid, we are the makers of folk art acrylic paints. So the colors I have are licorice, but any black will be fine. I've got magenta, just a nice dark pink color. I've got fire coral, which is just like the name, this fiery coral. And then I've got two from my favorite formula of paints, treasure gold. So I've got the original gold color. And then I also have um, fire opal, which is this beautiful, um, super rich and almost iridescent copper color. So I've got those today too, but keep in mind that this class is gonna be kind of all about um, a different and a unique color palette. So whatever colors you wanna use at home is totally fine. If you're going with a totally different fall decor um, color palette this year, absolutely feel free to use those instead. And then I've also got um, some really fun creepy crawlies that I got at Michael's. So Michael's always has really fun toys um, throughout the year, not even just seasonally. So I got this snake there and I got these cute little spiders. Um, so just kind of some fun things to embellish our funky pumpkins today that we'll be painting. Um, and then as far as the other supplies, I've got a, a pad of palette paper, which is just how I like to keep my paint. So a paper plate or whatever you like to use is fine. I just have a few um, flat brushes because most of the painting techniques I'll be showing you today are just base coating. Like I said, it's mostly about picking colors and creating fun things to base coat on, but I just have some flat brushes. I've got water basin, paper towels. Um, I've got a hair dryer because whenever I teach for my goals, I always like to have a hair dryer just so we can kind of keep the class going. You guys don't have to wait around for dry times. Um, and then also importantly, I have a hot glue gun and I have a silicone mat. So any silicone mat is great for this. Um, if you've got one, if you do resin or you do a lot of like decoupage crafts, you probably have one at home. Um, people sometimes ask, can you use wax paper in place of sil a silicone mat? And a lot of times you can, for example, if we were doing a Mod Podge project, I would say you can absolutely use wax paper instead, but we're going to be drawing some um, shapes on our silicone mat with hot glue and hot glue does not really separate from wax paper super well. So I do recommend making sure you have a silicone mat for um, that portion of the class. And I think that are, that's all the supplies I'll be using today. So do we have any questions, Em? Not so far. Okay, cool. Um, so let's get started. Let's start with our first pumpkin, which is our biggest pumpkin. So I'm gonna show you how to make this really super fun, uh, creepy crawly snake pumpkin. So um, what I love about this is that it's all just this one color pink. I think that's so fun. Um, it's kind of uh, 
subtle yet like spooky and like it looks very high end but all we did was we got one of our michael's pumpkins we got a michael's snake and we grabbed some of our folk art paint and we made something really uh chic and high end it looks like it came out of a catalog for halloween so let's start on that one so to start we are going to start base coating our pumpkin so i'm going to grab my magenta so again this is folk art acrylic magenta if you have multi-surface that works great too so I'm going to start painting that with a larger uh, one inch brush. This is a craft smart brush. You just want to make sure you get a nice even coat on there. So a lot of times when people are base coating something, I totally understand that we all get impatient um, and you just kind of want to glob the paint on there to make it go faster. But whenever you're base coating with acrylic paint, you don't need that much. You just need enough to cover the surface with a nice smooth coat. If you do any more than that, um, it could crack, it could chip over time. It'll definitely take longer to dry. So just start with a nice even coat, like I said, just enough to cover the surface and then let it dry and do a second coat if we need to. And Jess, I noticed in our collection of pumpkins today, you have a lot of different finishes in your pumpkins. Like some are more satin and some are more matte. Do you want to speak more to that? I'd love to. So um, like Emma said, um, and like I said earlier, we're doing a really fun and funky color palette today. So I just love the idea of mixing sheens. So not only are we mixing colors, but we're mixing sheens. So we've got some matte pumpkins, we've got some gloss pumpkins, and we have some metallic pumpkins. And I think when you put them all together like that, you just get a really interesting look. And like I said, it looks very chic and very high end, but it's all just really inexpensive supplies that you can buy at Michael's. But just switching up the sheens, if it was all metallic or all matte, it would still be beautiful, but this kind of just gives it that extra push. It makes it look extra cool. And let us know too, guys, um, you know, we do these classes every single week. We do a crafts class, and we also do our uh, paint night lives on Monday night. So let me know if this is your first class with plaid. Um, as you can see, normally we're in the plaid studio today. We're working from home. Um, so we're here at my, at my house crafting today, which is fun. Um, but let me know if this is your first plaid crafts class. I would love to hear if you have any new people, but also let me know if you're a returner. I'd love to say hey as well. So let me know in, in the chat whether this is your first class or whether you've you've watched us a couple of times and crafted along. Okay, so I'm just painting this with my flat brush. You can see I'm making quick work of it. You don't need to spend too much time. I'm just trying to get it as nice and even as I can. And you want to paint the stem as well. I want the whole thing to be solid pink. And then once I have this painted, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my hair dryer and I'm going to dry the paint before we move on to a second coat or to the next step. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry my pumpkin. Okay, so that's pretty dry. Um, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and give it a second coat just to make sure we have it uh, really pink. You don't want any of the white pumpkin showing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Do you have any people chiming in in the chat, Emma, saying if they've had a class with us before? Yeah, we do. We have quite a few first timers um, that awesome. are new to our plaid classes and also just to Michael's community classroom in general. So that's exciting. Oh, cool. Very cool. 
welcome everybody. And we have quite a few people as well who are saying um, it's their second class with us. It's their third class. So also welcome back. We're honored yeah, that you chose to come back. their class with us. That's encouraging that you decided to come back <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and take more classes with us. <laughs> yeah. We love that. So in case you guys didn't know, obviously we are the makers of folk art acrylic paints, but we are also the makers of Mod Podge. So if you guys like doing decoupage projects, um, or if you like to use Mod Podge to seal your painting projects, we do lots of really fun Mod Podge classes with Michael's Mini Classrooms too. So keep an eye out for that. I know we've been doing um, pumpkins and spooky um, fall stuff for a while now, but soon um, after Halloween's over, we'll be getting into the holiday project. So of course, here in the crafting world, we start crafting for Christmas way in advance and giving you guys inspiration and fun tips and tricks and ways to decorate. So make sure to keep an eye out for those too. Those are going to be a lot of fun. So I'm still just base coating. I'm not going to do the entire thing and make sure it's perfect. You would want to at home. And of course, if I were crafting this, you know, um, for the first time and I wanted to keep it in my home, I would make sure that I have a full coat and it's all dry and all that. But you know, this is only an hour class, so I don't want to make you guys wait for me to fully base coat every pumpkin. You, mm -hmm. you get the idea of what you want it to look like. I just want to make sure I have most of it painted so that we can move on to the next step. Okay, so like I said, we want to finish base coating that. And then I'm going to grab my snake and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to start painting him. I want to make sure he's solid pink as well, just like our pumpkin. And like I said, this like one, like tone on tone, like all one color and one sheen looked on this pumpkin, even though there's 3D elements, it's just very chic and very high end looking like it's in a fashion magazine or something. It's a lot of fun. And it's really easy to do. Yeah, totally. And Jesse, someone had a good question. They wanted to know if these um, faux pumpkins are hollow. Oh, they are hollow. Yeah, they're really lightweight, which is nice too. So if you're planning on keeping them outside, you might want to find a way to weigh them down maybe because I feel like they maybe could tumble around. Uh, but yeah, they're not, you know, they've got a, a little bit of weight to it, but they're not completely uh, full. So if you had like a hot knife or something and you're wanting to carve them, these are a great surface for doing that. Yeah, and that goes for, um, this goes for all of your pumpkins, your crafted pumpkins that you might want to place outside for Halloween too. We have two really great products that we like to recommend that are also available at Michael's for sealing your outdoor projects. And those are Mod Podge Outdoor and Mod Podge Ultra. Those are two really great options for sealing your outdoor pumpkins. Yeah, you can find both of those at Michael's, of course. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm going to put these aside now and I'm going to let them dry. Um, before we start gluing them on because I don't want them to be wet when we glue them. So I'm just going to set them aside and we'll kind of jump around a little bit here um, until our project is complete. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you a really fun um, technique for creating metallic pumpkins. So you might think, well, don't you just paint the metallic on? And yes, of course you do. But um, there are some tips and tricks um, to painting metallic. So a lot of times metallic, oh, here, I'll, I'll grab these pumpkins so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. This is our treasure gold. Um, and a lot of times metallic, I can show you here one that I started to show you as an example. Uh, it just doesn't have super amazing opacity because it's just the nature of metallic pigments. And what I mean by that is that you can see it kind of goes on a little bit see-through and it takes a lot of coats to get this full metallic solid sheen. So I've got a really great trick um, for painting metallics that kind of, like I said, you can see here, we just painted it straight on our white pumpkin and it's gonna take several coats, which I'm an impatient crafter. Like I know many of you are, um, and I just don't feel like I have time for that. So this is what I like to do whenever I'm painting with metallics. You're gonna wanna grab your black folk art acrylic paint. I'm gonna get some of my black here. And we're gonna base coat the entire pumpkin in black first before we paint our metallic on, which this is something that I only learned, you know, in the recent years, it never would have occurred to me to paint, um, to base coat something black for metallic. I think I would have just assumed paint, you know, a similar flat color, like a pink or an orange or something under this to try to get um, better coverage on metallic paint. But the reason that black works so well is that it is so dark and it reflects, or I guess I should say it absorbs the light. So any inconsistencies in the uh, paint when you're painting it on and the brush strokes and things like that, um, are kind of just less noticeable. It makes them more subtle. It absorbs the light so you can't see like areas of white underneath the paint. And it just makes it super duper shiny. It makes that metallic pigment, even with just one coat, absolutely pop off of the pumpkin. 
So once you see how well this works, guys, you are never going to just paint metallic paint straight on a project again. You are always going to base coat it black. It is really amazing how well it works. And of course, it's so great because black is so easy to paint on. Normally, you only need one coat of black. Yeah, exactly. You can see here, it's it's super great coverage. I mean, bulk art acrylic always has really great coverage, um, but black especially just because of the color. So I'm going to do half and half here, guys, so I can kind of do like a before and after and show you um, when you paint the metallic just right on the white, like I showed you, and then when you paint it on the black. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry this pumpkin before I paint the metallic so I can kind of demonstrate for you guys what I mean. And a lot of times we get the question, um, what kind of heat setting Jessie's using on her hair dryer uh, when she uses it to dry off a craft project. And usually she likes to toggle between warm and cool. So that's a neat little tip too. So again, guys, I just want to remind you, of course, if I was crafting these, I don't want to say for real, because of course we really are crafting, but if I was crafting these for the first time for my home, I'd want to make sure I have the entire pumpkin painted. Um, but just again, for time's sake, just so I can demonstrate to you all of these techniques today within the hour, um, I'm just doing like the, the top part so you guys can get a really good idea of how to do it. So I just have a couple more wet spots I'm going to dry. All right, so that is our coat of black paint. And I do wanna to note to you guys too, um, just something to think about when you're buying full card acrylic paints, all of our original formula of acrylic paints are matte. So you can see here, we have this really nice, it looks almost like chalkboard matte finish. Um, but if you're looking for more of a satin finish in your paint, you're gonna to wanna to grab the multi-surface paint. So just to let you know the difference, um, our original acrylic paint works really great on porous surfaces like canvas, paper, wood, um, even really great on these uh, pumpkins because they're not super shiny. But um, multi-surface is great for pretty much everything else. So you can use it on metal. It works great on all those things as well. Um, in addition to metal, glass, fabric, it's flexible and it is super durable. So it'll stick onto slick surfaces. So um, the multi-surface has a satin sheen and then the original acrylic has a matching. So just something to think about when you're choosing your paints for future projects. And Jesse, Christina had a good question. She wanted to know, could you use a black pumpkin instead of painting black on like a white or orange pumpkin? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I, I'll, I would bet that Michael sells black pumpkins seasonally. I know that they have the white and the orange ones. So that's what kind of what I wanted to show you this technique, but yeah, if you have some black pumpkins at home, you, you don't have to base coat. You can totally just go right on with the metallic. Great question. Okay, so now I'm gonna, so this is a, a white pumpkin that had our fire opal just painted straight onto it. Just one coat and you can see it is still super shiny and gorgeous, but it's not solid coverage. It's not that like really opaque uh, metallic that we're going for. And then of course we painted half of it with black and I'm gonna show you how it looks different. I'm gonna portion this out. And if you guys have not used um, Folk Art Treasure Gold yet, it is one of my favorite paints ever. It is the shiniest and most metallic water-based non-toxic paint that I've ever used. So a lot of times if you want like a super mirror shine in your paint, it's gonna be smelly, it's gonna be solvent-based, it's gonna have fumes, um, where our Folk Art Treasure Gold is just like the rest of our Folk Art paints. It's super safe to use, but it is so dang shiny. You can see your reflection in it. It is so, so, so shiny. Okay, so I just got my flat brush again and I'm gonna start brushing it over the black and you'll see how super shiny it is. Wow. Can you see the difference? Yeah, totally. 
you're going to need to have way, way, way less coats of it when you put it over black as opposed to putting it over white or a different color. So again, it may seem like, well, this is all just like just straight painting, just base coating things, but there are some things that you just learn over time, the more you craft and the more you use certain products that will really help you speed things up and make your life a lot easier in your projects in the future. And this is one of those little, little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. And so Jess, we have another question. So Debbie said they have some seagrass turkeys. I'm not exactly sure what that is. So if you, if you could clarify, that would be awesome. And they wanna paint them with jewel tones. Um, so they wanna know if they would paint them black first and if they would need to use a multi-surface paint. So I don't know if uh, the seagrass turkeys are like porous or a non-porous surface. So that would be great to know um, to, to find out whether or not you would wanna use multi-surface. And um, I think for jewel tones, Oh, they're, they're like reeds. So, so that would be like a porous object. So you wouldn't need to use the multi-surface unless you would want to place them outside because our multi-surface paint is uh, great for outdoor usage. Yep. Um, and I think the black, uh, the little black trick, Jesse, is uh, mainly for metallic paints, right? Right. Yeah. So if you're going to use metallic paints, I always recommend painting it black first, just because, like I said, you have to use way less coats than metallic to get that full coverage. Um, but yeah, so it's totally up to you. If you're gonna use like jewel tones, just like flat colors, like blues, purples, pinks, um, you can just use the straight multi-service paint right on there. You don't need to base coat it black first. Great question. Uh, and like Emma said, I should have mentioned that when I was differentiating between the two. So um, multi-surface paint is water resistant. So like Emma said, it is safe to use outdoors in a covered area. Um, like on your porch and stuff, you can absolutely put these pumpkins out on your porch. Um, and it is also dishwasher safe. So that's good too. It's top rack dishwasher safe. So if you use this on like wine glasses or something, once it's cured, you can put it in your dishwasher and the paint will not um, wash away, which is awesome. Okay, cool. So hopefully you guys, uh, this helped you out a little bit when you're planning out your uh, pumpkins and crafts. Um, so you know now you can totally see the difference here, half and half, how much easier it is when you paint black underneath your metallic. So. So this is a this is what we did here. We painted it black first, and we painted our just I think two coats of our metallic right over it. And you can see we've got that like mirror shine. You can totally see your reflection in it. Super shiny. It looks great. And Jess, yes. we had a comment a little bit earlier. Um, Kay said that they would be interested in us doing some classes for Hanukkah as well as Christmas in the holiday seasons. Um, and I think that we definitely have um, a class or two planned later in this year to uh, represent some different cultures other than just Christmas. So definitely look out for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a lot of great inspiration too um, on our website, cloudonline.com where we do all different holidays, um, inspiration and crafts for families and kids and even just for decor. Um, again, that's platonline.com. We've got thousands of projects on there with full instruction. So go ahead and check that out too. Like I said, we will be doing some Michael's classes too though. So look out for those. Um, okay, cool. So I wanna make sure I hit all of the really fun techniques we have here. So my snake and my pumpkin are still kind of drying. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue those last. And I'm gonna show you um, probably my favorite technique of this whole uh, grouping of pumpkins, which are creating these super fun spider webs. So we have these spider webs here that we've used to accent our pumpkins. We just kind of like put them on the stems here um, that you can see just how super cute they are, um, all different shapes and stuff. And they are completely DIY and I will show you how we did them. Those are so, so this cute. is where our hot glue gun, oh, sorry, Emma, what'd you say? I was just saying those are so cute. I love those. <laughs> I know, me too. So this is where a hot glue gun comes into play as well as our um, silicone mat. So this is what I've said before. Um, people always ask if you can use wax paper or parchment paper in place of a silicone mat. And a lot of times the answer is yes. Like if you're doing a decoupage project and you're just trying to protect your surface without your project sticking to it, I would say absolutely you can use wax paper, but hot glue does stick to wax paper. So it's not gonna come off as easily as we want these to. So you really do need to use a silicone mat for this part. All right, so I've got my hot glue gun here. Um, and just in case you guys are wondering, this is a um, fine tip, high temp hot glue gun. So it should be fine if you have a, a lot larger tip with um, a low temp. I don't see why it should make any difference for this particular craft, but just so you know, that's the one that I'm using. 
So we are going to start drawing out some spider webs on here and you can be totally creative with it. You can do some of these little corner shapes or you can do the full webs. Um, it is totally up to you, but I'm going to show you how I draw out my spider web shapes. So we're going to start with um, like a plus sign. So I'm going to do a line going down and make sure my glue's coming out. You want to make sure you get full lines. You don't want any breaks. And if you did get a break, Jess, would you just fill it in with more hot glue? Definitely. You can see I'm kind of going back here and making sure my lines are nice and thick. You can totally just go back and fill it in. Okay, so I have a plus sign there. I don't know if it's it's tricky to see on camera because it's clear. And then I'm going to do um two, like a multiplication sign over it. So we have kind of a star shape. Or an X. Or an X, there you go. I don't know why I didn't think of that. You're in like a, you have math brain right now for I know. whatever reason. I know, Stop that literally that. never happens to me. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to draw lines to connect all of these and that'll give us a really simple spider web. But instead of going straight with each of our lines, they're gonna be kind of curved um, between each of our uh, lines that we have here. So I'm gonna start at the top right and do a curved line. And don't worry guys, if your lines aren't perfect and you feel like it's a, getting a little messy, this is supposed to be like a haunted, creepy cobweb situation. So it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. It's still gonna look really cute once we paint it with our metallic treasure gold. So I'm going between all of the corners and then I'm gonna go one row below that and continue my pattern. And this is again, you can use this technique for so many different Halloween crafts, not only for these pumpkins, but these could be like window clings. You can put them on all different kinds of things. This is a really fun one to make for your kids and then let them paint them. It'd be this cute to pick up little, like a little banner of them and put them on your mantle or something. Oh my gosh, like a garland. That would be adorable. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here, super easy to do. Don't worry about it being perfect. You just want to make sure it you have all the lines there and it'll totally be red as a spider web. Um, so now that's how we did like this big round one. I'll show you how we did this little corner piece here. So we're just gonna do um, kind of an upside down L. It doesn't really matter if it's upside down, I guess. And then we're gonna do a couple of lines coming out from that. So this is kind of just gonna be like a slice of the larger one we did. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do all of my areas of my web just like we did that larger one. And you can see just another way to do these spider webs. So you can put these on your pumpkin. So this is how this one will look when you're done. And you can add these to um, any of your Halloween crafts. Sorry guys, my dog just got home. So he's running around if you heard that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now we're gonna let these cool. We're gonna leave them right on the silicone mat until they're nice and cool. Um, and they're really solid, just like these are before we go ahead and paint them. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, awesome. We, we were laughing earlier. Uh, Jesse was saying, please excuse me if my cat decides to join the class today, but we said it would make this class um, even more appropriate <laughs> because Jesse has two black cats. Exactly. I said, I can't guarantee you they're not gonna jump on this table during that class, but at least they'll be on theme. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we are gonna let these dry. I would say dry them with a the hair dryer, but of course, if you add heat to these, it's, it's just gonna keep them um, hot and we really want them to be cool. It's not so much if they're dry, it's that they've cooled down because that's what's gonna make them solid. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside just for a second so they have a chance to cool down. Okay, so now guys, I'm going to check on my pink pumpkin that we did in the beginning with our painted snake, and I'm going to see if it's dry and it's still a little wet. So I'm going to grab my hair dryer now and just kind of finish the job here and make sure that's nice and dry because you don't want it to be wet at all. If you're going to be gluing things onto these pumpkins, um, if the paint is wet, the glue will just peel right off. You want to have a really good adhesion. So you want the paint to be super duper dry before you start gluing anything on. So I'm going to use my hair dryer to do that.
great thing about matte paint is that um, you can tell when it's dry because it won't be shiny anymore. So I can see here, there's some areas that are still shiny. And since I know that it's gonna be matte when it's dry, that means my paint's still wet. So I'm gonna keep hair drying it. So that's dry enough. Um, and like I said, guys, of course, you would want to make sure you have full coverage on your pumpkin. Not, you don't, you don't want to see any of the stem color showing stuff like that. But again, just for time's sake, I want to make sure you have all of these techniques under your belt. Okay, so now I have this snake that's dry. It's a different one than the one I painted earlier, but it is dry. So I'm going to use this one. And we're going to start gluing our snake on. So I'm going to start at the top where I want my head to be placed. And I'm kind of going to um, you know, mold it on here as I go to make sure it's in a place where I like it. And you want to be very, very generous with your hot glue. So I'm going to put a good pool of hot glue in the areas where my snake is going to lay to make sure I have really good adhesion. I'm going to lay them down. Of course, you're going to be very careful, especially if you're using a high temp glue gun. So we're going to hold that there until it cools to make sure it's on really snug. Sometimes I give it a little bit of a blow too, just to cool that hot glue gun down. Cause like I said, I'm not a patient crafter, but you do want to make sure that it's really cool before you move on to the next section. Cause otherwise it's just going to keep popping off and it's going to be a big pain. How's everybody doing out there? Um, do we have anybody crafting along? Um, I'm not sure you guys let us know in the comment section, if you are crafting along today, if you're watching for inspiration and you plan to craft later, let us know. Yes. And also I would love to hear too, guys, if you're making different pumpkins at home or if you've already crafted all your pumpkins for the season, um, I would love to hear what kind of pumpkins you guys made. If you just did hand painted ones or stenciled or decoupage, I would love to get some inspiration from you guys as well. So let us know in the comments if you've done any Halloween crafting. Okay. So like I said, you want to make sure it's really cool before you move on, but I just want to make sure you guys see all of this. So I'm going to move on to the next little section here. And you saw that I kind of laid out the snake before I, I moved on. So I know in advance where I'm going to lay my glue. And you're just going to keep doing that till it spirals all around your pumpkin. So you have this really cute and creepy snake pumpkin for your pumpkin grouping. Cute and creepy together is one of my favorite aesthetics. I think it's so fun to do. Um, I feel like using these super cute toy animals that Michaels has is opening so many possibilities for future projects. Honestly, it really is. I always pass by that aisle and I'm like, oh, that's so fun. Like, what would I use that for? And I've often seen like the jars where people use the little woodland creatures as like toppers and paint right. them, which is always really cute. Um, but I'm always looking for ways to use those just because it feels like, it almost feels like a challenge whenever I walk, walk by yeah. that aisle at Michael's. I'm like, what can I craft with those? You know? So this is a really fun idea. I see people making those like DIY mason jar snow globes with little reindeer and little polar oh, bears. Oh, really cute. Cool. I love that idea. Okay, guys. So you can see here, super simple. I know it seems like you could, this is a no brainer, but just a really fun and unexpected way to decorate for Halloween. So this is one that I just, I think is so fun. This is one of my favorite pumpkins that we made this year at Plaid. So I'm going to set him aside. Um, and now I'm going to show you again, like we were just talking about, um, Michaels has all these really cute little, um, figurines and animal little sculptures, um, and just great creepy crawlies for, um, Halloween. So I'm going to show you guys, um, how I painted these again, super simple. You can do these in your flat colors, or you can use the metallics like we did here. But, um, since I have my, my copper color out here, which is called fire opal, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint my tarantula black, don't forget. And he kind of is mostly black already. So I'm just gonna cover up some of the lighter areas. Not, I don't have to paint the whole thing. And while you're painting that, Jesse, I'll catch you up on what people are crafting at home. Oh, cool. So a lot of people are watching for inspiration today, which is awesome. Um, somebody says that they are currently working on painting a spooky spell book, which I Ooh, love. I love that idea. Yeah. Um, Someone says that they are crafting along today and they're trying to do a Kusama design. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'd love to know. That sounds interesting. 
yeah, a lot of people are uh, getting ideas and techniques for later. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for reading those to me. I'm, I'm, I always, like I said, I always love hearing what you guys are doing. Yeah, me too. Drop my hair dryer. So I'm going to grab my hair dryer and dry off my little spider. That was a quick one. So now I'm gonna grab my little brush again. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and rinsed. And I'm gonna go back with my Fire Opal Treasure Gold acrylic paint and do a nice coat of metallic on him. And you can see again, just how easy that metallic goes on when you base coat it in black. It is something that I think a lot of people wouldn't have thought of. I know I wouldn't have until I, I kind of figured it out with my friends at Plaid, but it just makes it so much shinier. And you have to do, like, again, maybe two coats when a lot of times with uh, metallic paint, just simply because of the nature of metallic pigments, you know, Treasure Gold is really good as, is really good as far as coverage goes. Um, that's still going to take you, you know, three coats to get perfectly uh, full coverage, especially if you have, like, a pattern underneath it or something, or it's just plain white. Um, so this, you know, black base coating trick is kind of a game changer. All right, so we just finish painting him in and then let him dry as well. And then you can use your hot glue again to glue him onto one of your pumpkins. And again, like I said, I'm really excited about this whole like tone on tone, like two colors or like one color covering all of the items on your pumpkin. I think that's just so fun. I love the way that looks. I think it's like very chic looking. So I'm gonna glue him right on this copper pumpkin here and just really, really cute and fun looking. Don't you love that? Yes, uh, and I was just thinking about how much I love hot glue too. <laughs> Again, a really good uh, adhesive so for the impatient easy. crafter. <laughs> What'd you say, Ham? I said it makes everything so easy. I know, it really does. You're totally right. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I'm going to set them aside. Um, and now the final step, the final uh, piece from a technique I'll show you is um, our painting our spider webs. So I showed you how to draw them out with your hot glue. Um, so now you can just leave them right on your silicone mat for painting. And that's because that's where I left silicone mats. They're great for crafting on because they're washable. So you can get paint and glue and whatever else, a Mod Podge, of course, all over these. Uh, and then you just wash them afterwards. And a lot of time it'll just peel right up too. So that's why I love them for crafting. So again, I'm gonna paint these with our metallics. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna base coat them in black first. And don't forget, if you don't have black, you totally can just do the metallic. It'll just take a couple more coats, that's all. So I'm just gonna do a quick base coat. And again, you don't need to be careful because you can just rinse that paint or peel that paint right up from the silicone mat when you're done. And Jesse, June had a great question. She wanted to know, could you use Glitterific on these hot glue spider webs? Oh, totally, I love that idea. Um, so what June is talking about, guys, is we have a product called Folk Art Glitterific, which is the best glitter paint you'll ever use. So it's got many, many, many different sized and shaped particles of glitter in each bottle so that when you uh, apply it and it's super, super thick, there's more glitter than there is base, if you know what I mean. Like there's not as much glue. Um, so it's really, really um, concentrated. And when you put it onto any project, all of those different sized particles just make your whole project just shimmer and shine like a disco ball. It is the best glitter glue. I um, I love sh like glam and shininess when I'm crafting, but I really do hate the glitter cleanup, like when you're using loose glitter. So that's another game changing product for me was Glitterific because now I add shimmer and shine to every project I do. And I never have to worry about like a, a messy loose glitter mess because it is absolutely no mess. It's all just suspended right there in the base itself. Um, and it just only goes where you want it to go, which is awesome. So make sure to check that out if you guys haven't already, but that would be an excellent addition to these projects. Yeah, that's a great idea, June. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer, but like I said before, don't forget, you wanna make sure to dry it with your cool setting because if you take your hot hair dryer onto this hot glue, it's just gonna remelt it and that is not what we want. So make sure you have your cool setting on your hair dryer if you're gonna dry it with a hair dryer.
Okay, guys. Um, so it's dry now. You, as you can see, I went ahead and pulled it up while I was drying it just because it seemed like the mat was wetter than the glue itself. Um, so I'm trying to hit it one more time because there's a little bit of a damp spot here before we start painting with our treasure gold. Okay, so that should be good. So now I'm going to go ahead, since we've been using so much of our fire opal, which I, I love, I'm going to switch and show you guys just the original gold color of our treasure gold, which is the first one that we ever came out with that would just completely awed me. And then they came out with all these other really gorgeous colors. So look how shiny and gold that is. It's, it really is like liquid gold. Okay, so again, I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm just still using this little flat brush. And I moved it off um, of the area where I had painted it black, just so I don't get any of that black into my gold paint. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint that with my treasure gold and you'll see how well it goes on. And that is because we base coated it in black first. So if we had just done the um, treasure gold straight onto the clear glue, it just would have taken way more coats. Okay, and you can see how shiny it is and what a fun little accent it will be when it's dry to add to any of your pumpkins that you've painted today. So you can see here, you can glue it on or you can just kind of set it down um, or you can kind of loop it onto the stem if you want to, but um, just a really fun way to um, accent all of your super funky and fun pumpkins this year for Halloween. So that do you have any questions or comments then? Oh. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that that gave me a great idea too for little Halloween treat bags to put it as like a next Ooh. to the little gift tag on bags. That would be such a cute little thing. That's a great idea. I love that idea. So yeah, you can, you know, glue all these out and then let your kids paint them and put on treat bags for their friends or to give to trick or treaters. That sounds like a really fun idea. Yeah. Um, so guys, I hope you had so much fun today uh, painting with us. We always love crafting in the Michael Smitty classrooms. Um, don't forget, Every Monday night, we are here at 8 p.m. Eastern time doing our paint night live, where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. So we'll be here next week. And then I want to say next Wednesday, Emma, we have our pumpkin party. So that's going to be really fun. So Emma and I will both be in the studio um, showing you tons of different ways to use Mod Podge on your Halloween pumpkins this year. So if you, um, check that out if you guys are Mod Podge lovers or if you're curious about it. We'd love to have you there. We're going to show you um, how to stiffen things with Mod Podge out of Mod Podge napkins, just really all of the Mod Podge things. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, and if you decide to post your projects online, if you've crafted along with us today or you got inspired, please hashtag plaid crafts so we can see what you've made and we'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye.